Gander International Airport, July 31, 1963. The Lockheed EC-121K Super Constellation, Buno 141329, heads across the tarmac for some practice runs of touch and go landings. This would be her final flight. The Lockheed Constellations were based in Argentia, Newfoundland and Keflavik, Iceland. 329 was in Keflavik just weeks prior to her demise. The Constellation was designed as an airborne early warning system equipped with the latest in radar detection. The video you are now viewing was taken in Argentia, Newfoundland and brings some insight into the day-to-day -day operations of the Constellation. Naval Station Argentia is a former base of the United States Navy that operated from 1941 to 1994. It was established in the community of Argentia in what was then the Dominion of Newfoundland. The Constellation Bureau Number 141329 that crashed during training operations in Gander had her maiden voyage in 1956. Up to that day she had 8,444 total airframe hours. Whereas she was only doing touch and go exercises at Gander, a full crew was not needed, usually 20 crew members. On this day, there was only seven aboard. The headline for the Newfoundland Daily Newspaper dated July 31, 1963 read, Plane nose dives, burns, crew scrambles to safety. Seven crew members of the United States Navy Super Constellation clambered to safety within moments before the aircraft burst into flames, crashing at the end of the runway at the International Airport. The Constellation plane, based in Argentia, Newfoundland, had been practicing landings and takeoffs at the airport. Another source indicated that the plane ran off the end of the runway, slid through an unoccupied ILS localizer shack, went into the mud, and came to rest on the perimeter road. The fuselage was broken in front of the wing. Gander Airport Manager Rex Tilly said the loss of equipment was of no concern, as two other runways at the airport were equipped with electrical devices which performed similar tasks. Upon discussion one time with my father, Frederick Smeaton, a longtime employee of Eastern Provincial Airways, an avid Gander historian, told me about this incident and whereas he produced two pictures and a short story of Jim Dempsey, the person who was working out of the ILS shack at the time. My father reiterated that Jim had told him that he had just put his coffee on for his lunch when he was called away for some work-related reason. Before doing so, he placed his coffee upon a corner shelf in the shack. Upon hearing of the incident, he returned to find the shack totally sheared off, but to his surprise, his coffee still remained quite hot and ready to drink, sitting on the shelf. My father actually showed me a couple pictures of the coffee mug sitting on the shelf, but at this point, I was unable to locate them. At this time, the only thing that can release the 329 from the position on the road is the muddy aircraft lift known by all Ganderites as Paul Bunyan. This giant hydraulic lift has made for a favorite background while taking pictures for residents of Gander. An engineer on duty at the time, during the ill-fated last minutes of 329, stated that my safety belt was the only thing that saved me. I ended up pinned to the roof of the cockpit. The second pilot assisted me in getting back to the main cabin. Just after the seven crew members evacuated the aircraft, it burst into flames. Fire officials had the flames put out within 15 minutes. The crew members were brought to nearby Banting Memorial Hospital for routine checkup and were later released. The aircraft was rode off and scrapped. My father was an amateur photographer and videographer all his life. Although he kept this small shaky 8mm film on the shelf all these years, today he would be proud to share it with any and all who might find interest in its history. I dedicate this video to my father, Frederick Francis Smeaton who as stated before was a longtime employee of Eastern Provincial Airways and was an avid Gander historian.